Salve, amike, and welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at John chapter 5, verses 21 through 23. Sorry about the background noise. It should shut off someday. Uh, but last time in John chapter 5, There's that, and here is a rubric. Let's get started. Sicut enim pater soscitat mortuos et vivificat, sic et filius quos vult vivificat. Neque enim pater judicat quemquam, sed judicium omne dedit filio, ut omnes honorificent filium, sicut honorificant patrem. Qui non honorificat filium, non honorificat patrem, qui misit illu. That was a lot of similar syllables. Uh, at the very beginning of our verse, of our verse, I made a similar mistake with the Greek video. Of our first verse, we have sicut, which means just as, and then enim, a post-positive word telling us that we do, in fact, have a new clause, so the versification is correct. Uh, pater as our subject because there's no change to the stem there. Soskitat. We have at as our ending, and this is a first conjugation verb, so it's soskito, soskitare, soskitawi probably, and then soskitatum. I would assume if it forms like a typical first conjugation, there aren't too many that are irregular like do and sto. So we got relatively normal here. Not relatively, exactly normal here. Third, singular, present, active, and indicative. And we get the word resuscitate from this, so raise up. Um, except in the case of resuscitate, it's raise up again. Re is the prefix that means again, one more time. But in this case, I don't know if the Romans you would have used Ray with suscitat for bringing someone back from the dead. I'm not sure. But uh, mortuos, omo, not omicron, os right there for a, an accusative, plural, masculine, generic, as the direct object of suscitat. And vivificat, we have another at right there. And this is also a first conjugation, so it's going to be the same form as suscitat, which makes sense since the et can, should typically only connect two things of the same form as we do here. Mortuos being taken as the object for both of them just assumed. Uh, seek introducing another clause, which I'm going to go through the end of the verse rather than translating it all right now. Thus, et, since we've got the thus there, we don't want to have et it mean simply and, so also is going to be the better option. Uh, Phileas with that us right there, clearly our subject as well. Quos os for another accusative, plural, masculine, clearly referring back to mortuos. Uh, Wolt from wolo, wele, wolui, an unusual, irregular verb. And I suppose that was redundant, sorry. Uh, meaning to wish, to will, with a T, even without the vowel, we should know that this is a third person, singular, present tense, active, and indicative. Let's see, wolo, wele, wolui. I don't really remember clearly what the imperfect is, but it's probably Wollebam, so V-O-L-E-B-A-M. I believe that's how it forms, but I can't say that the imperfect is something I've run into very much. Uh, Vivic Ficat, same form as up here, so again, we don't need to parse it, we can just bring it down from that one. I forgot to take note that uh, Vivic Ficat, we have, um, and I, now I've... And forgetting to bring it up, I have also forgotten what the actual form is. But uh, uh, the um, vivat, I believe, is a verb for live. So it's either an adjective or it's a noun. 
VIV US probably, or it could be VIV UM. I don't remember. Uh, if I recall, there will be a note. Sorry if there's not. But uh, it's just a combination of the, the uh, word for living with a verb for making, uh, which is not as common a thing as we that, that we have seen as I think Latin actually does. I think they do kind of like German, if I'm getting German correct even, stick nouns and adjectives on front of the verbs all the time. But anyway, uh, moving on. End of verse 22 then. Uh, neque for not, post positive again. Father does not. Judicat at there. This is from judico, judicare, another first conjugation. So I'm just going to pull that down again. No need to parse it. Quim quam from quis quid, the em right there, tells us that we have an accusative singular uh, masculine. It would have to be masculine in this case, but masculine generic since it's referring to humans in general as the direct object of judicat, said eudicium, um right there, this is a neuter noun, so it's either nominative or accusative singular, omne matching it, telling us again, that's a neuter, uh, dedit, it right there, this conjunction, telling us that pater is the subject of dedit, therefore eudicum has to be accusative neuter. And then philo here with that O is going to be a dative or ablative singular masculine. Dative once a dative as the indirect object, so ablative is incorrect, dative is correct. Note that we have the reduplication here borrowed from Greek on our irregular first conjugation verb, telling us that this is a third person singular perfect tense, which matches with our Greek, which is dedoken. And what the Greek perfect tells us, which Latin can't do since it doesn't have a distinction between uh, single time, past tense, and past with present effect tense, as the Greek does. But what, what the Greek perfect tells us is that the father has given judgment, all judgment, to the son, not only when he originally gave it, but with lasting effect up until now and also into the future. So it's something that continues to be the case. Moving on into verse 23, we have a purpose or result clause with ut. And if we take a look at honorificent with that e right there, we have our first subjunctive. Honorificent is a first conjugation, and I'm, I should probably just stop saying that, it's too difficult. But e and t subjunctive to go with the ut, third person plural. Omnes right there, nominative, plural, common, masculine. As our subject fitting the the, plural, the plurality of the verb there with philum, um, as our direct object, singular masculine, and sequit introduces a new clause, so I'm going to pause right there, finish writing that down. Uh, no, I'll, I'll come back and write that later. But if you take a look at honorificant as our verb of the next clause, we have that a distinguishing between our subjunctive here, should at least write, and an indicative in this case. So in order that, or so that all who may honor the son just as they do reality there honor the father and then qui clause right there em accusative singular masculine direct object qui non horrificat at there tells us that this is going to be another indicative qui is singular with that t so um that is singular masculine philum as a direct object again non modifying this other verb in the next clause following subsequently to this one. Note the A, so we have another indicative, third person singular, so same subject, qui, with honorificat here. Patrem, E-M, as our direct object, don't need to parse it. And then this qui is not going to refer back to qui here. It would not be necessary, since we've already got it, it would just be miss it immediately. But this qui refers to the next nearest noun, which is patrem. So change of subject, this one nominative singular masculine with misit, it right there, mito mitere misi, so we have a perfect tense. I'm skipping so much work that I normally do. And then ilum as the final thing, uh, whatever. Uh, um from ile, ila, ilod, accusative, singular, masculine. This is going to be, as I've called it 
previously, the far demonstrative pointing past our subject in uh, towards somebody else. So who is immediately past our subject? Well, Philip. And it's not going to be referring to qui, because that's the verb, and he's beyond qui. And it doesn't make sense for qui to be honoring the father who had sent qui. No, it doesn't make any sense. Instead, it must be referring to the son. Matches as qui really would in number and gender. So I'm going to write all that down, including the parsing, and be right back. Let's go ahead and take a look at this in its own context. For just as father raises dead ones and makes them alive, thus also son whom he wills he makes alive. For father does not judge anyone, but all judgment he has given to son, so that everyone may honor son just as they honor father. Who does not honor son does not honor father who sent him. So I think qui is not as clear here as it could be, but I'm not sure if oliqui would fix the problem. Well, that's my final thought on that. Eh, not clarifying anything else myself. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope taking a look at this has been helpful for you, and I hope that you have a very good day. Wallet.